we'll call the meeting to order. First on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Is there any amendments or anything to add tonight? I don't have anything. No, I don't. <clears throat> I move we accept the agenda as written. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And then public comment inquiry, if there's anything that anybody would like to bring up that's not currently on the agenda for this evening, now's the time to do it. Jesse and Owen, did you guys have a specific question or? Yeah, um, we, we came, um, I don't know how f this is formally entered into the meeting, but we're, we're here to talk about our water rate. And also just to kind of share with you all what, we're thinking is going to be the future for the next couple of months for the bar. Okay, sure. So that that's kind of connected to the water rate. Yep. Issue. So water bills were just generated today, so they haven't mailed out yet. And then obviously part of the discussion we're going to have tonight is the new water sewer rates, but your specific EU and how that's calculated, um, certainly um, you and I can talk about too. We probably are not going to get it resolved tonight because I don't have that spreadsheet with me to figure out how you're calculated. I, I think I have a little bit of information, yeah. but we can certainly chat about it. So why don't you go ahead and tell us what's going on at Babes? Um, so obviously we have not been open <laughs> for yeah. uh, months and months and months. It feels like a very long time, um, but I think we're um just based on what we're expecting the governor's guidance to be based on guidance for other types of businesses that are starting to reopen it's looking like a diminished capacity max um it's looking like obviously a lot of different health standards that need to happen in the space um and with the diminished capacity we're looking at about like 14 to 16 people maximum being allowed inside of the bar and so I think for us, um, after like a lot of sadness and mourning <laughs> and think crunching numbers and having different types of ideas, like maybe we'll do carry out, maybe delivery, we're kind of coming to the place of, it feels like we might have to kind of hibernate for a little while. Um, and that it's really like, obviously like the regulars are our lifeline mm -hmm. and big events are, how we pay the rent <laughs> sure. so like with, without both of those things it's really hard to think about us being like sustainable um in especially when we think about the winter and added costs of winter um plowing heat all the things that happen um, mm -hmm. so we're kind of thinking about hibernating just kind of maybe we'll do some catered events maybe some pop-up events but really not thinking about being back to the level of um business that we were at for probably 12 months at least um and so just okay. preparing for that and sure. so in that we're we're not anticipating having uh the number that we have for our water rate is based on a conversation that we had with greg magger when he mm -hmm. came in and we kind of chairs and we kind of thought about how many what our capacity is how many people are seated mm -hmm. and that's just going to be that's going to be different for the next year um, sure it'll It'll be at zero. And yeah. that is, <laughs> probably, probably and that zero. is <laughs> yeah, and that is how it's calculated for bars and for restaurants. Actually, you're a little bit unique because Tim Mills and I had this discussion about you all because normally it's 35 gallons, 30, 35 gallons per seat um, per person. And we felt that was not fair to you guys because of the mm. fact that you're not serving big meals. And so we came at it from a different angle and we're charging you the 15 gallons per seat and um, right. that's how we were looking at it because yeah. obviously you're not cooking big meals there to, you know, twice a day. So are you thinking that, um, how does your heating system run? Do you need water or are you thinking about just shutting off the water and closing up the building? Um, I don't think we're gonna shut off the water. We kind of wanna, so we're right now because we opened on june 15th it's also a period where all a lot of our big contracts annual contracts are up for renewal so like our insurance contracts and things like that 
So in and in searching for next year's rates, we're having to be honest with those people about, okay, I don't think we're going to have a karaoke night. I don't think we're going to have a big dance party. I don't think that's happening for the next year, probably. Right. Um, and so, but we're still wanting to ensure the building in case things get better and maybe we can well, open. Well, or sure. And you could probably, we, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. We're not the limited point. coverage. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So we're, we're not at the point of like shutting off water, but mm -hmm. we literally have not had anybody in the building in three months and probably yeah. won't for a while. So yeah, I guess yeah. we're trying Maybe to just it. kind of stop the bleeding, honestly. Yeah. Um, uh, so this is one of the ways of just being realistic with y'all that we are not using water right now. Our customers are not using our water. And so if there's a way that we can minimize that cost to us for the next couple of months, that would be awesome. Um, but yeah, yeah. so right. yeah. yeah, so what the select board has done in the past is they have, you know, given people like six months at a time, like, but usually it's been for a building that has rehabbed, you know what I mean? Like maybe they, somebody bought a really, you know, place that need a lot of work. And so then they have rehabbed it. But I mean, Chris, what's your thought about, <clears throat> about this, about the, and the boards about the EUs? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Just trying to think through it. I mean, we're kind of in unprecedented times, so it's yeah. You know, typically, yeah. typically how we approach, um, you know, as water commissioners in the past is, you know, the rules are the rules unless you know what we did is um, to allow certain individuals to um, to purchase uh, places to fix up in the downtown. We we've, we've done some things where. You know, um, you know, for giving water or sewer for a period of time while they fix it up, uh, which is not what we're talking here. I mean, there's, and, and my guess is that you guys are not the only ones that are going to be in that situation. So right. um, there's probably going to be some other business owners in town that are, are probably looking at things the same way you guys are. Hmm. Um, so I, yeah, I don't really, I don't really know right now. I mean, what's the board, other board members thinking? I mean, it's probably something, you know, in the past, we've done it on a case by case basis. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, right now where the way things are going and, you know, there might be some businesses that may not open this year or may open in a, um, a very less capacity than they're used to, mm -hmm. um, you know, how we're going to deal with that. Do we deal with it as a, uh, everybody as a group together, you know, this is what we're going to do as a town mm -hmm. or do we continue to do it on a case by case basis? What it, what do you all think? Um, we, we have in the past done vacancy rates. I don't know how that would affect the businesses, number one. And number two, we have a board of abatement if, if it comes to that, and that would allow a case-by-case -case, uh, handling of each, each business. I don't know, that's my thought. But the, the board of abatement. Board. It's not for water and sewer. Um, it's for penalty taxes and penalties and interest, things like that. Tax assessments. Yeah. Uh, the the select board does he, does that. Okay. Does that? I think that you know if we look at the vacancy rate, that's a good option. I don't know how it applies to this particular case, but you also have someone else like you know like Dave, uh, the sandwich shop there, who hasn't been able to have any bodies in the building eating but is still you know functioning as a as a business in a way so that's a different kind of scenario so i think we have to stick with the case by case basis uh when we consider what to do right because right now we're at zero income and zero customers <laughs> so right i i think that the yeah. case by case basis is definitely the best and you know obviously we're here tonight to discuss the sewer water budget and all that and what really covers the budget you know is the eu so each individual so every account like if it's a resident it's one eu but businesses pay more than that so when tim and i work through the budget and all the numbers that's what we're basing the rate on is how many eus people are using so 
we need to be very cautious about what you choose to do as a board because we've built a rate around x amount of eus and if we start cutting those to vacancies or not no no offense to you guys jesse you know i'm just telling you how it works if we start cutting people's eus and rates then we're not going to cover the nut which is you know the, the the bill so uh, so i'm glad you guys are here tonight to you know have this conversation yeah. And I think to Paul's point, um, I think that you may get other businesses asking for this because, I mean, Cock Noodles has no one in their dining room either. No one is using their bathrooms, right? Like, there's just, there's, there are, yeah, it's a different world that we live in right now. So, um, That's true. we just wanted to raise it, see what was available. And we're, we're, honestly, we're just crunching the numbers over here and figuring out how we can survive this so mm -hmm. it's it's an export it's an exploratory question right know? certainly yeah, we literally. have had other people you know bring this topic up we do know that while cockadoodle may not be able to seat people in the restaurant they're certainly able to do you know a good takeout business and so some people actually have done better than others so we understand that and um obviously it's unprecedented we do know that however that there's been a lot of money, uh, about $2 billion flushed into the state for people, for businesses to be able to get through this. And if you use it for payroll or you use it for utilities, there's no payback to that. That's just, a, you can use that. If you use it in different ways outside of the parameters set, and Lindley can clarify if I'm wrong, then I think there's a half to 1% payback. But I was understanding um, if it was used for payroll and utilities, you didn't pay it back. Was that your understanding, Lindley? Um, it sort of, it depends. That's again, a case by case, uh, the way they it, approve it. So, you know, without knowing details and I don't think we need to go into those for just, no, yet, no, certainly not. It, it, it really does vary case by case because like the Arnold block has no employees. So we will get no, nothing from the government right. because we don't have employees and it's all based on that. So it, it really is, um, not, I think the criteria we should go by. No, um, I certainly not. Say, I just, I'm not sure I agree about the vacancy rate piece, and I sort of want to ask a clarifying question um, of Jesse and Owen on that, which is, uh, you mentioned maybe doing catering, in which case you'd be, you wouldn't have customers in your space, but you'd be using your space to then clean whatever you use for the catering, right? It depends. It, sometimes that's a plastic cup situation. Sometimes okay, because that, that was kind of my question was yeah. in a vacancy rate situation. I think my understanding is we act as though the water shut off or we physically shut the water off. And if that would hinder your ability to do those catering gigs, that kind yeah. of thing, that would make a big difference, I think. Yeah, I think we're, we'd like to be in a place where we, we do have access to water because we've been in there cleaning and, and whatnot. But um, I'm sure. Yeah, but it, it's not. Uh, yes. Therese, what do you think about, you know, because I'm sure, again, I think, you know, Jesse and Owen's case is probably going to be, you know, multiplied here in the coming weeks or months uh, of other um, potential business owners um, that are in the same situation is, well, what about on our next select board meeting inviting uh, maybe um, Senator McCormick or one of them to join us and see and see what they're thinking. Well, not only see what what the options are for our business owners in town, but also maybe we could also at the same time have some of those business owners on the Zoom meeting with the senator to express some of the concerns that the business owners have and what they need from the state government to supply them. You know, kind of get that back and forth. This is what we need. We know you have money. How are you going to give it out? Yeah. You know, and maybe get some of these answered, or if not, maybe just getting our legislators' um, interest perked on what 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 people might need. Um, sure. I don't I know who else other than Dick. You know, I don't know if maybe Sandy. If we ideally, I think probably if we could have both um, Dick and Sandy on would probably be would be the best, and then. And then maybe if we could get you know half a dozen of the business owners from downtown on that might be in similar situations of Jesse and Owen um, to kind of talk about you know what does this path forward over the next six twelve months look like 
you know, how can we weather that? And then, and then once we have maybe some information from them, then maybe we can try and think of how as a town we approach this, you know, is that in, you know, I know we don't want to change our EU calculations, but is that in maybe some payment forgiveness or working payment plans or, you know, doing it on a case by case basis where, you know, some things are forgiven, you know, I just kind of what are our options and, um, you know, maybe there's a bunch of money that the state potentially will have available for business owners um, that can make payroll and utilities. I don't know, but. Jesse and Owen, do you feel like you've been reached out to like have the information about what the state's currently offering or do you, do you feel like that's been easy for you, information for you to get? We've been pretty up, up to date. Um, yeah. We're okay. tapped into a network of, yeah, of business owners, or, or restaurant and bar owners around Vermont who have been pretty, who have been in touch with legislature and. Okay, good. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and we were, I mean, we applied for, we were approved for a payroll protection loan. Um, it's frustrating that we can't uh, welcome our staff back right now because yeah. we still can't reopen in the way. Right. I mean, it would be different. It would be different if we, we had a larger food menu, but because we have such a small food menu, um the the law still requires that we serve a meal when we do take out and carry out cocktails right. or beer so there's yeah. there's just all these little pieces that it's hard to you know people are like when are you going to be open we're like there's so many little pieces <laughs> that it's very hard to answer that question but number one we're not allowed to have our actual physical bar open right now yeah um, and so and it's just been hard to yeah yeah it's just been hard to use because i feel like a lot of the resources um, I've heard from other types of businesses are actually very helpful, but I think for the service industry, um, particularly the bar and restaurant industry, um, who are mostly closed right now and are also a very uh, specifically cash, like it's just a cash flow issue. Yeah, um, it makes sense. Type. It makes sense that yeah. you're in a such a weird situation. Uh, we kind of yeah. were wondering about that, reading the updates and where you stood and when you could bring people in. And we're still trying to figure out if we're gonna be yeah. able to open a pool. So, you know, it, it is, it changes. And, and, and you're right, I totally understand. And I, I feel bad. I mean, it's, a, it's such a tough situation for business owners right now, especially for someone like you guys, you know, you hadn't been in business all that long and then boom, COVID, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, yes. It's tough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So our next meeting is on the, on the 8th. Is that right? Yep. 8th. So we, we can get feelers out there to see if maybe uh, Sandy and, and Dick can join us. And maybe at the same time, when we, if, you know, or Owen and Jesse, maybe you can, get um you know a half dozen of the business owners in town that maybe are most impacted by this um to join us on the call and you know they can express the frustrations that they're having on you know yeah board and yeah, sure. yeah. If there's nothing set in stone now maybe you yeah. know maybe dick and sandy can go to montpelier and advocate for these folks yeah well and i was thinking about this a little bit chris in terms of um because I agree with you that we have, as a board, we have to think about this as a bigger picture. You know, mm -hmm. as the water sewer board, we have to think about what's the bigger implication here. But I also think that Jesse and Owen have a very unique scenario. Um, and then really the other two businesses that are impacted that I think would change would be Cockdoodle and the sandwich shop. And those probably should be handled separately from, you know, or thought about separately from Jesse and Owen's scenario because they're so different but aside from that whose business is drastically changed by customers not I, I don't think in terms of water sewer usage mm -hmm. I think those are really the three businesses in our downtown that are drastically impacted I don't know if others would would make a case for somebody else but for the most part everybody else is still able to do business still probably using similar levels of water you know like even here we're using we've left everything at Pretty much exactly the same because we're using the same things we would have used but um it wouldn't be the same for like jesse and owen have no one in their building um so I, I guess i'm just saying i think i agree with you that looking at this as a big picture is the right way to go but 
aside from those three businesses, I'm not sure I, I can identify any, any others that are drastically affected in terms of water sewer. But I think you make a good point. The insurance offices, Lindley, are working. They just can't have people come in the door, but they're all working. Um, so you're right, Jesse and Owen are, are in a, you know, sadly unique situation. I agree with you. Has anybody checked in with the, the Creek House, Ginger? They're fully closed, I think. They're not even doing takeout. <laughs> but are they on water sewer? <laughs> no. no. Okay. But she has a takeout window, right? <laughs> She has but a take window, but they've been closed since March 15. Yeah, so they, I don't think they're planning to do anything, at least as far as I've heard. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a good point, Jesse. I'll reach out to Ginger. Um, yeah, I'll reach out so, to her. So thank you. Maybe in addition to um, what Chris is suggesting about our next meeting, and this is sort of a question for Tim and Therese. Um, is there a way to sort of do some projection ideas of what might work incorporating what Jesse and Owen's case is and what cockadoodle and the sandwich shop cases are and then sort of so that at that meeting we're looking at here are one or two potential plans of what might work, what might not work, um, what numbers look like realistically if we do these different scenarios. Um, I know you guys just did all that work. so. It's, well, it's, it's, it's fine. What Jesse, they don't have that big an effect on us. It, it is a small effect. It does play a part in that. But like you said, the cockadoodles actually been fairly busy with takeout. Um, and I've heard some stories from what's going on inside. They are doing okay. Um, Ginger doesn't play a part in this bill. Um, so if we only have, you know, some minor adjustments with uh, the bar and maybe one other person, it's not going to have that big an overall effect on where we have the budget laid out right now. And it's only temporary too. Yeah. Yep. yeah it's a direct correlation because there's a p cost per EU. So every time we cut somebody there's from a regular EU to a vacancy right. rate. So sure, Tim and I could say, okay, let's say we bring Jesse and Owen to whatever, to say zero and we reduce the sandwich shop, if we made a couple of reductions or not of specific businesses, say we lost 10 or 11 EU, then what you're gonna see is we can do that and what you're gonna see is a higher rate for everybody else. And how much that will change right. is not gonna be horrible, but we can certainly do that, Lindley. Run some options. Yeah. I think it's good to look at that, look at that option and see what the, what the impact would be of a couple of different scenarios, yeah. It, it's, that's not, you don't just snap that out. You got to have some numbers to actually lay with it. Um, trust me, I, I made the formulas that does the figuring. Um, <laughs> so you'd have to know kind of exactly what you're talking about and I'd who would to, want out. Yeah, that's what I'd have to do, Tim, is we'd have to, you and I would have to sit down, figure some businesses, give them a specific change in our mind, you know what I mean? And then yeah. you and I would have to reduce the amount of reserve mm -hmm. DUs and run them. So we can do that then I guess my comment would be, and Tim, you can weigh in here, is maybe you don't adopt the budget then tonight and you wait until next meeting to adopt the budget because if you adopt it now and then you make some decisions, which are all fine with us, maybe you need to do it. Maybe you shouldn't be doing it today. As long as you get it adopted by June 30. Yeah, but again, if we're just talking small changes too, it may not affect the budget by a lot. It could always be well, if they if they went down to a, a vacant, it probably wouldn't be life changing. Right, but if they close the building and they go to zero, that's they're like seven. Well, it's the same points. as anybody in town that goes to Florida. Yeah, true, but it's like <laughs> seven point something. Their sewer is doesn't really matter because they're at that flat rate, right. but the water could be, but we could run a couple numbers. It's Okay. The, the other thing too, and I don't know if there's any other, you know, non-utility um, questions out there in regards to COVID and how it, it's affecting our community communities, but, you know, we could also bring those questions forward to, you know, our representatives on the call as well. I'm sure there are pieces of it. I mean, even, you know, I was talking to my barber and even when she goes back to work, you know, the cost associated with going back to work is almost not even worth working. 
It's, mm -hmm. you know, every single person you have to, you know, have a completely different bib and, you know, change out all your stuff. And, you know, I mean, it's just, at the, and you know, one person at a time, you know, is it even worth being open, you know? Um, you know, so there's probably a lot more at stake than just water and utilities at this point. You know, there, there are definitely some businesses that are thriving because of COVID, you know, the local hardware store is doing very good because nobody, you know, people are staying locally and buying locally. Um, you know, so there's, you know, definitely some people that make out on it too. So, you know, I would just suggest, I think it would be really neat to, you know, if we could get both of our representatives on the call would be awesome. Or if not just one and maybe lay out some, some of the questions that the community is having and it may you know the business owners and maybe some of the um you know residential people as well on you know what relief is out there for us and what what are they thinking is coming either in the first bill or the one that's being worked up now and you know because i i think it's hard for us to make a decision so we kind of know what all of our options are and i'm I'd happy to reach out to dick tomorrow and then um can yeah. certainly we can send and an I, email know, out to businesses and I'd hate to, you know, for us to make a decision and find out two months later that, you know, whatever, um, you know, there is money available to, you know, pay for this or rather than us have to, you know, make a lot of knee jerk reactions at this point. So well, in theory, there's supposed to be another federal stimulus bill of some kind if they ever get their acts together down there. So there may be some more business relief funds available. Possibly. Yeah, maybe yeah and I, and I think you know one would think that you know Dick and Sandy would have quite a bit of information that they could share with us or or at least maybe make some recommendations on you know what path to take on this I'm sure we're not the only community that's uh, having these questions no I had this conversation too with Dick and then somebody else too because you're right I mean there's a lot you know stimulus money but like Lindley made a great point it doesn't it's not going to affect everybody um, right. the way it works. So certainly, yep. but yeah, I'm happy to reach out to Dick and some local businesses and see if they have questions. If they have questions, maybe we can even get them to Dick in advance. I can talk to Lindley and, and, um, Jesse, I think they both have email lists of people. All right. So unless we have any further questions on that, I mean, I would say just on Jesse and Owen's end of things is just, you know, uh, make sure you guys deal, um, you know, just continue to work with Teresa on this. She's going to be the one that will be able to, uh, you know, work with, you know, setting. I know we're going through and we're reviewing current EU usages now. So maybe yep. they were saying earlier that might already affect you. Um, and then, you know, I would say, you know, after we have a talk with the representatives, maybe we have a um, you know, maybe as a group, we make a decision as a group based on a couple of the businesses in town, or maybe we have you guys come forward one at a time and, and see what more we may or may not be able to do for you. So um, we appreciate you taking the time out of your day to visit us. Usually Doug's our only, uh, <laughs> our only visitor. That's right. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank thanks you so all. much. Yeah. Good luck thank you too. For Thank you, holding Doug. everything down during this global <laughs> pandemic um crazy yeah well jesse or just give me a call at the office or send me an email and we'll you know work through it if you guys have specific questions for uh senator mccormick or you know or sandy haas you know let me know and we'll get them to them in advance to see what else is out there for you guys thank you Great. yeah be safe Great. thank you thank you very good much. evening appreciate it take care so did anybody on the board have any, any further questions in regards to that? Are we we're good or? <laughs> Chris, you have a barber? <laughs> I have a barber. Uh, how'd you do that? <laughs> the same barber that I've been going to since I was 10. <laughs> wow. I, don't even have to, I don't even have to say anything. I just sit down, she cuts my hair. Like that's just the way it works. Nice. <laughs> I, I couldn't even go to another one. I won't even know what to even say. So <laughs> that's funny. All right. So uh, any anything else uh, under public comment inquiry? Anybody else have anything else? Doug or Lisa? 
right? Elisa, we got the bench reset at Peavine. It so looks thanks. awesome. I did see that. Thank oh, you good. very much. Right, well, yeah, thanks. it looks great. Thanks Thank for you. Letting, yeah, thanks for letting us know. Yeah, I'm going to putter around down there and just, um, I've had someone offer me some hostas and stuff, so I'm just going to do some planting and stuff down there, but nothing in the way of mowing or anything like that, but. No, Richard's got that covered. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Awesome. Thanks. Okay. Okay, moving on. So the, um, the So next on, uh, we had the water and sewer budget discussion and and rate setting for 2021. Yep. Any questions about the budget or anything? Obviously, you know, Tim's doing a little math here. So obviously if you took out some EUs, you're talking about a slight increase from 119 to 121, but we already know that Kevin Barry mentioned the sandwich shop. so. This is where if, you know, one, so you take off EUs for the um, uh, babes and then, which is, you know, fine. Then you, you take off for the sandwich shop and then what if cockadoodle comes to you? You know, we have to figure out, I guess in my mind is how do we quantify this? You know, maybe Lindley or somebody has a good idea, but if they're doing takeout and their business is just as good if they had seats, like how do we know whether their business is right good or not I, I how do they make you know if they're making up and take out what they would normally have done in seats how are we i don't think you can uh i don't think you should be able to use their uh quantity of business if they're not using the water that's where it's at because that's what we're charging them for is to have the water available and how much they use and how much they deposit into the, the septic so if they're having a million dollar year that should, but nobody's going in the store, that their their income should not make a difference. Well, Mike, we obviously don't meter the accounts, so we can't really quantify how much water they're using. And maybe they're doing takeout, so they don't have people in the restaurant, but not everybody that's in the restaurant uses the bathroom, but obviously they're using water for dishes and, you know, sanitizing. Well, under, and but maybe they're not the ones to do that, but I'm thinking more like the, uh, well, yeah, the babes was, is more is the big one as far as what's going on there, because if right. they if they use a little water, but if they have people, they use a lot of water. Yeah, sure. Probably Cockadoodle uses. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. Probably Cockadoodle uses eighty percent of the water when they do takeout than if they had people in there. Right. That's kind of my question. I know the sandwich yeah. shop because certainly we, we already know because Kevin Barry was here not long ago and he had the same thing about them as maybe Dave's, you know, business is doing great with takeout, but not with seats. So this is what I'm saying. I just think that it's something for you to think about because once you come up with that idea or that thought process, you're going to have to apply it to possibly at least three businesses. So Abe's of course is different because they don't do the, have the volume of people, whereas Cockadoodle, even with the front clothes, they could be making pizzas like mad, you know, or right. or Dave maybe is doing a ton of sandwiches. So it is, it's that's what I'm saying, Dave, is just something to think about. Babe, uh, Babes doesn't have a kitchen. Huh? Is, Babes doesn't have a kitchen. Right, exactly. That's my point. Yeah. Where that big water usage. Oh, I think they're a no brainer. They're totally easy. I'm just saying, you know, what I like just to be thinking that we also know that Kevin Barry has mentioned it and, you know, we're talking about cockadoodle and just, we could have a couple other businesses. So it's hard to know how to quantify all that is my point. How do you use figure for the Arnold block? It's based on, um, it's basically Greg and I sat down and by space figured out the number of EUs we use based on the number of people. Uh -huh. And when Teresa and I looked at it this year, the, what changes is so insignificant that it really wasn't worth changing much. We have, mm -hmm. we still have the apartment going and then we have a few office users. And so aside from that, very little change. So we just left it as it was. Um, so I, yeah, the Arnold block's such a different case. If we had the kitchen here up and running, it would be different, but we haven't yet. So mm -hmm. it didn't really make any major mm -hmm. changes. Yeah, it, it is usually each business as if it's, yeah, she obviously is unique. And uh, because of her uses, certainly where, you know, someone like, uh, you know, Mills Hardware, those guys, we go by, what we did was decide, you know, went through 
all the spreadsheet that we had for commercial businesses, made sure we had all the commercial businesses in it, and then applied the correct water supply rule to every business, which is something that had not been done in the past. We actually gained a couple EUs, lost a couple here, gained a couple there, but just making sure that everybody was treated the same so that, um, you know, that's the way it's supposed to work. And it looks like, you know, looking through the water and sewer rate schedule that the, the increases are pretty, pretty limited for this coming year. You know, it's yeah. a dollar, a dollar on the water and, you know, whatever, 40, 40 cents. Sure. Sewer. Uh, I guess one question I had in that is, and it made sense to me that the, um, you know, if the rates go up slightly, then the vacancy rates would go up because that's a fixed cost. Do we know why the rate, the, the vacancy rate actually went down on the sewer end of things? Yeah, I'd wondered that. I think that we had paid off a note. So some of the stuff we did go through this time and make sure that all the fixed costs were the same, but we had, I think we paid something off. Um, I don't have last year's with me right now, but we also had a reduction. Oh, I know we had a reduction in some costs um okay from one year to the next so i think that was what um let me look i've got this so, i mean that I was that was pretty pretty much the only thing that really stuck out to me when i was <clears throat> reviewing it and i just said oh that's kind of interesting the vacancy rate actually went down a dollar 70 or whatever yeah uh, we reduced a couple things we reduced postage we reduced legal services um so okay. tim had certainly made some cuts in his budget mm -hmm. To, we had reduced a grant match that we had and, you know, we a few things like that. So we also okay, picked up sense. some EUs so that when you pick up EUs, that also helps. Right. So we're thinking with the 21-22 the schedule, that will start to include the water bond pieces? Yes. Yeah, yeah. okay. So we did. I know Paul had mentioned that was certainly concerned about people taking a big hit this year when we knew we were having the water bond. So obviously we looked through the budget pretty seriously and and uh, to make sure that we could try to keep the rates. That was one of the reasons that we tackled the project of making sure that actually people were being billed what they should have been billed. Like uh, Bethel Mills went up because they weren't, you know, not everybody was being charged the same and that was a problem. So we went through and made sure everybody was being charged uniformly, that everybody who had to odd apartment in their building was being charged for an apartment and trying to make sure that across the board that we, um, you know, we updated this spreadsheet that had been created a while ago that someone had created but nobody maintained. So we went through that this year with some, you know, it took a while yeah. and now, uh, but went through it. So we also gained a little, so, which was nice. All right. So what do you want to do about the water budgets? Do you want to adopt it now? Do you want to wait? I mean, what's your, Well, I, you mean, I, I think at this time, I mean, regardless, you know, I mean, we're only talking, um, the potential of maybe, you know, a couple of businesses that are actually going to be affected by the, this utility. Um, you know, I, I guess my, my opinion would be to, to move forward with the rate schedule as, as it's proposed and, and then any adjustments would be made after the fact, just like we would on any normal year. If, you know, if we adopted this now and someone comes to us a month from now and they're going to, whatever, remodel a space and they want something, you know, obviously mm -hmm. go back to changing all the EUs again. So, mm -hmm. um, you know. One of the things that Tim and I had talked about was obviously we know we need to update ordinances and that'll, you know, come when we have more time to get to that. But one of the things we talked about was the possibility of just chain of saying to people that once your EU is set in July, it's set for the year. Because when yeah. we have these fluctuations, these both the water sewer budgets owe the general fund money. So every time that we lose money, you know, by reducing EUs or something, uh, just more money that they owe the general fund. So one of the things Tim and I kind of went back and forth about and you know, about was the pros and cons of saying, okay, July 1st, this is your EU. No matter what happens during the year, this is what you're going to pay. And then, so if a new business comes in, they win, right? They get to have some time where they are charged whatever the rate was before, but it's hard for us because we're not flush with cash. So every time we monkey with people's rates, um, you know, if they go to vacancy, that's great. They're covering the nut at least. But if they don't 
if we shut them off entirely, then, you know, that's, that's hard for us. I think it makes perfect sense to look at it as a, a yearly or an annual schedule of, you know, this is the snapshot at that time. And I mean, unless something majorly happens to the business or the resident inside that year, right? It, any small little things, you know, it just, you wait until the, the next year and then you, you know, fill out your new questionnaire or whatever and make your adjustments. But yeah. Rather than, you know, in the past, there's been so many adjustments made to the accounts over quarters. And uh, I think that's where we get ourselves in trouble a lot of times is, you know, we're making all these adjustments. and It's true. Yeah, that's what Tim and I have been saying, too. We were kind of hashing it out through the budget and just kind of back and forth about pros and cons. And so, um, but anyways, yeah, we were we were happy that the rates were, you know, such a really small mm -hmm. increase this year we figured that would make everybody happy so what, what about the school have they asked for any uh change i mean there's no yeah you're, you're talking hundreds of people and there's nobody there no well, they, they haven't pay, and they don't pay all summer either yeah they don't pay all summer so we have two and a half months and if they don't open in september right we currently um they don't open in september you mean <laughs> bad parents and yeah. damn well better <laughs> yeah <laughs> we calculate their that building rate. won't be standing that's right we calculate their rate dave so that we take into consideration the fact that they're um closed in the summer so we do that when we in, in their formula for creating you know how many like uh, john's always terrific about responding so we know how many teachers how many kids this and that so we know um what their, you know, what their parameters, and we give them a break, obviously, within the formula for the summer, but this is exactly what we're talking about. At some point, there's going to be federal aid, and we can't give everybody a break because we can't afford right. it, and we don't qualify for the money. So the school, can, if I they can get... The governor is talking about all these school budgets going back to vote, and if they do that's... that, they're going to be looking for some money somewhere. Yeah, I did I think see... That's a bad idea. I did see today that I, I if agree. if the town of Bethel, like as so if towns have to borrow money because we can't come up with our school tax money because regardless of whether we collect it, we have to pay it all to the school by June 30th. They did say that if we had to take out a tax anticipation note that there's money available down the road that will hopefully pay for that, you know, interest. But that's the thing is, you know, I had this conversation with Dick McCormick, I think, and somebody else saying, look, we can't keep, we can't take financial hits, you know, and he said we shouldn't have to because they flooded the state with, you know, right now, $2 billion. And, and well, I think the school is going to be eligible for some aid um, to, to cover, you know, they're part of the payroll protection plan. If the school got that, Dave, it also was cover utility bills. Okay. I, I don't I know their that. financial situation. I was going to say, my, my wife works in another school district and they haven't heard anything like that yet. About the payroll protection? And the utilities. Yeah, I, you know, uh, again, I'm not super well versed in that, but I do know, what I do know about the payroll protection is that it was to be used for payroll and utilities, but whether or not the school qualifies, I don't know. Um, maybe Lindley knows, I don't know. Well, no, well, I'm not even, I don't think that the school even applied because they're, on a budget so technically everybody that had a contract through june 30th they had to honor those contracts through june 30th that money's already been slated for those positions and so at least all the conversations i've been involved in from the administrative level about that was that every job that existed had to be maintained because the money was already technically there in a way you know it's not actually there but right. theory it is and um so i, I don't believe that this would even qualify to apply for it at this point. I don't know moving forward how that would work. Um, Maybe a different story if the schools didn't open, let's say in the fall, then that probably be probably different. Yeah. So yeah, and, and um, so they're doing, you know, they're obviously, you know, like we are hoping for a good tax collection and the school's in a unique position as Dave knows they're going to get all their money, whether we have it or not, whether we collect all the money or not, the school gets paid from, going to get paid from us, going to get paid from Royalton. And I don't know what the state's doing, but we have to pay, we will pay ours, you know, full boat. So I was curious, Lindley, how that worked with the contract. So, yeah, 
Can we, just to go back to um, the point you were making earlier, Teresa, about um, once, the, once the calendar year, once the rate is set, that's it for the calendar year, would that then exclude abatements or would abatements still be allowed? Like if somebody came in and said, you know, whether it's the situation like Babes or even the, the Dylan McCullough renovating an apartment building, would we, would we be excluded from being able to do abatements, I guess, is the question. <clears throat> Well, we don't know. We were just kicking around an idea. This is just what Tim and I were talking about. We've just been, we were brainstorming about it when we were doing this because we were saying, okay, we, you know, Tim did these formulas, we did all this math and you're trying to figure out, okay, um, you know, every time we change something, it, 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 you know, makes it a little difficult. So it's nothing written in stone, Lindley. Tim and I were just talking about ideas when we finally both have time to work on a new water sewer ordinance. So I don't know. It was just something we we're kicking around. Right. I was just curious how it would work if, if you said that, if we said yes to that, mm -hmm. would we then exclude ourselves from being able to do abatements or not? Just how yeah. that would work. I don't know. We haven't really thought about that much, you know, thought all the way through it. We just kind of were kicking around ideas yeah. about basically how do we stabilize a rate was kind of what we were thinking is, um, you know, for us, we were trying to think about stabilization <laughs> so we were kind of thinking about that but that's a good point Lindley I'll make a note of that so when Tim and I rehash this conversation you know we'll think about that because yeah the select boards always as water sewer commissioners always have the ability to abate so maybe we just need to build a cushion of EUs into this thing and then we're <laughs> kind of cover it well changing rates and abatements are just a little bit different you know if someone abatement my mind is something completely different than having instead of having three EUs, you have five or three, you have one. That's a change of use. Right. right. Abatement is that there's some reason, some bigger reason why you want the, it to stop. So I, I don't know. I, I would take that in consideration when you're thinking about it. We will. Thank you. I, I think the biggest thing is like in the past, we've heard you know, different accounts like um, now that the name's slipping, the ones that have the two properties that came came to us there late last year. Oh, Hill and- Holly Hill. Hill. Y yes, and remember, remember trying to tr trace the quarter by quarter adjustments that were made on those accounts? Yes, it was crazy. And, mm -hmm. and I think, I think it, you know, if I got Therese right, the abatements would still be on the table. And, and any major change, a major change might be change in ownership or, you know, uh, closing down or renovating in the middle of the year or something. Right. I think what we would do away with would be all those small adjustments like, let's say Lindley's place decides next month that they're going to get the kitchen going, right? So right. maybe that kitchen would not be identified for the remainder of this year, but then next year you would start to pay that whatever increase on it. You know what I mean? Um, so we just probably do away with some of those nitpick adjustments that. Yeah, because he, yeah, night. it is, especially if everybody calls you every quarter and all of a sudden their apartment's rented, their apartment isn't rented, their apartment's yeah. rented. It's, it's, you know, yeah. it was, it's tough. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Well, and that, that clarity helps a lot because I think that's where I was getting confused was um, rate changes if those included abatement process or not, but it's sounding like you're, you're looking at really two separate things of rates for the year and that's it. And then if somebody comes for an abatement process, we deal with that. As yeah, you, have to, you have to maintain the abatement yeah. process. That's a statute established by statute and right. has, has to be available to uh, taxpayers. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, so that was all, Lindley. We're just kind of, we, we were just kicking around ideas about stabilizing stuff on how to, you know, keep consistency within the rate so the money keeps coming in and so we can have the ability to kind of, you know, deal with these changes. So what do we think about the rate schedule that's proposed? I mean, I, I think, it, you know, I mean, the changes are, you know, very small. Well, it, it just kind of depends if you're going to give them a vacancy rate or if you're going to give them a year off. Um, it ends up being around $3,400 out of the budget if you give them 70 EUs. But I so, think now, you know, I mean, I guess the way I'm looking at it is, <clears throat> you know, we got to set the rates um, 
and then you know whatever happens happens i mean it'd be like no, we can you're, you're right chris we can live with the 3400 going away um we just tighten the belt somewhere else in another corner and we'll make it through another year it's not a big deal well and it's not to say we'd give them a whole year of right and also you know, maybe well, as many options, options. Right. Of some kind. We could do it. We could do it like we've done with other people in, you know, three quarter increments, you know, or yeah. go, quarter by quarter or six months or um, yeah. but I think if we postpone it because we're not sure what's going to happen in the future. It's no different than yeah. whatever building burning down overnight and then you're stuck with, you know, a change, a major change. Sure. That's happening. Yeah, you could kick the client. You can kick it down the road for the year. Right. Yeah. worrying about what's around the corner so i guess i with that said chris i just assume you guys made a decision and, you know i guess if anybody else you know has any more discussion on it i mean again i think you know the water schedule rates that are proposed here are, are you know very we're, we're you know the water is going to go from 118.35 to 119.45 so it's an increase of dollar ten a quarter, you know, and then you got the um, gallons, uh, thousand gallons a meter, uh, which is going up 24 cents. Yep. The vacancy rate uh, would be increasing as well, which uh, 40, 69 dollars, 69, if I read that right. Um, so that's going to go up a dollar 69 um, and on your, on your sewer rate schedules um, going from 182.08 to 182.56 and um, I can't see where anybody could complain about these rate increases they're less than a one percent I mean what, yeah. what goes less than one percent right so yeah, n yeah. nobody no. should complain so I would say right now I mean I, and I it's guaranteed that we're gonna have some small bumps in the road when it comes to utilities and probably even taxes this year. Um, but I think it's important that we do set our rates as we normally do this time of year. And, and we're just gonna have to deal with those little bumps as they come, so. Yeah. I would agree with that. Yep. So unless uh, anybody has any further discussion, I would entertain a motion to accept the proposed 2020 one uh, water rate schedule. So we'll move. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, ayes have it. <clears throat> Any further conversation on that? Well, just about water sewer is we always put out the letter every year with the new bills or we put them out in the bill that goes out this month, which is actually going out tomorrow. So it's going to be the same schedule that goes out in the bill. So people know the water sewer rate schedule. Um, I made a note for people that some commercial accounts may see an increase in their EU as we reviewed each commercial account to be sure their EU calculation was in line with the state of Vermont's water supply rule. Um, have their link to the consumer confidence report in here because and that's already on the website that that's out um, and then I did give a brief update on the very bottom about the water line project schedule that's something people had been looking for so mm -hmm. we have the schedule from May 18th to July 17th so in the next bill we could put in another little blurb about the schedule um, so this letter will go out with the water bills which will go out in the mail tomorrow All right. All right, we'll move on to uh, roadside mowing bid. I may not, I didn't see anything, maybe didn't put anything in the packets, but I didn't see anything in the packet. Mm -hmm. No, there wasn't. If you looked at okay. the town manager's report, it said that the roadside mowing bids are due Monday at three. So I was gonna let you know. Oh, so, I'm sorry. That's okay. I thought it meant, yeah, okay, gotcha. So they came in today, so we got yeah. one bidder, um, Music Mountain Property Maintenance, which is Michael Ketchum, which is the gentleman that did it for several years prior. Um, mm -hmm. So that bid is on my desk, and, uh, and I had a lot of running around this afternoon, so I haven't opened it. Um, but I was hoping that he would bid because I knew that somebody else was not going to. 
he was the only bidder. So basically, I'm really just looking for a motion um, for you guys to authorize me to negotiate a deal with this guy. He did a good job in the past. We never had any complaints. And um, I was actually very happy that he bid. So what did we what did we have um, set aside for roadside mowing for the budget? Um, let's see. What did we have? Seven or nine thousand. Um, and uh, let me see if I have it on me. Um, I don't. Let me see if it's in my thing. Let me look at my Excel spreadsheet on my on the computer. Yeah, I went to grab it. I got halfway home and I'm like, ah, I forgot that bit on my desk. Let's see. Let me look. I guess the only concern I would have is just uh, making a motion and finding out that it's. Fine. Well, yeah, obviously I'm not gonna authorize well, more than could, I. We could make the motion to not exceed what we've budgeted. Yeah, I can right. look at, let me see, if I go online, if I open another, somebody have a town report nearby because it will tell you in there. Um, I'm sure I do, but where? <laughs> I know, I'm just gonna look at the website. Hang on real quick and yeah. um, I can look. So I'm sorry, I apologize. I totally left it there when I headed out. I'm assuming that, um, that it's on our website. Mo, do you have yours? Up handy. Lisa's, Lisa's got, got hers, it. it's like. Good job, nice. Yeah, I can't get the website to come up, so my internet must be. So Lisa, it would be under um, the public works. She's looking, yeah, I don't have mine here. And I can't get on the website for some reason, of course. Well, and Therese, you were saying a uh, motion to let you negotiate. And so if what Dave is saying of just not having it exceed the approved budget amount, is yeah. that sufficient? That would be fine. Yeah. And I can plug a number in tomorrow. So yeah, I just can't get it to come up on my webs on the website right now. So For some reason I was thinking $10,000, but I was thinking seven or nine, but Lisa's, I see her. She's <laughs> looking. <laughs> You're muted. You're muted, Lisa. Lisa, you're muted. She <laughs> <laughs> you can sign it to us. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Nine thousand for twenty twenty one. All right. 9, okay. Sorry. Thank so you. I would, I would uh, entertain a motion to allow Therese to enter negotiations with what was the name of the business? Uh, Music Mountain Property Maintenance. There's Michael music, Ketchum. Property maintenance um, to not exceed the budgeted amount of $9,000. So moved. So moved. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, ayes have it. Abby's eyeing in the background. All right. And uh, any, anything further on the roadside mowing? No. Did we have an idea when we would do the roadside mowing this year, please? Ju yeah, I said that told them uh, they could start July 1st and it had to be done by August 15th. I had done some research because we had someone come to our meeting. If you remember her, she lived in East Bethel, was concerned about the bees and the butterflies and the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And so I right. did try to look into that and I figured out when the state did theirs, but. Um, you know, it's kind of July because we don't have the money. So that's right. when it has to be. So I am going to ask him to obviously if there's big milkweed patches and avoid that. And it sounds like he's done it long enough. So he knows what to, what he's looking for. So. Okay. All right. Next up, we have the, the line of credit at Mascoma Savings Bank. So we're looking to extend the terms of the current line of credit that we have with them. Yeah, the, and the, uh, yeah, for the April flood. So the current balance is two hundred eighty-three thousand forty-six dollars and eighty-eight cents. It's on the documents you received. I have a check mm -hmm. which will be going out with this. Um, we got some money from FEMA, so we'll be paying down another hundred and twenty-seven thousand ninety-seven dollars okay. and sixty-nine cents. That was in the report. So um, obviously, we don't have the money to pay this off, so we need to extend it. Um, it's going to require signatures, so. Um, you can make the motion and all that. And then if you could just come in individually, if you come in the handicap entrance, park near the 
um, mailbox is you can come in my handicap and just bring you right into my office and I will put it um, right there on the shelf. I'm going to be out of the office around 10 to be at the rec field, but people could just come in and sign it and I could leave it flagged for you right there if that works for people. So after the payment that you have, it looks like we'll still have a balance of about 155000 Yeah, and that doesn't include I, if I have to take a draw, which I might to pay for um, P-Vine. Um, I'm getting the study done right now, the hydraulic study for Pinello, and I already talked to FEMA about the possibility of requesting an extension because I'm not going to be able to get that new bridge in this fall because of COVID. I'm already, we're already right. behind on the hydraulic study and I need that information to mm -hmm. obviously do the bridge design. So, um, but I may need to increase this to borrow money for Pivon, but I'm also hoping as projects are finishing and they're getting through FEMA that we'll get the money. I did reach out to um, Kim Cancanera the other, can uh, the other day at the state, Chris, after our last meeting. And she said that that looks like I'm getting ready to get some more money as well. So <clears throat> as I asked her how long after it's, you know, set, you know, that they approve our project, do we actually get the money? So, so well, we're waiting. So in the paperwork that you have here, it says to extend the line of credit of $283,046.88. Right. Does that actually, you know, I don't, you said you're making a payment at the same time. So does that mean the loan now would be 155000 instead of hundred? No, because we need, we need that cushion to pay. So no, it won't. That we need to extend um, because I need a little room on that line of credit to, um, to borrow, you know, because it, oh, gotcha. it, it was a okay. line of credit up to. Well, that was um, going to be my next. Yeah. That was going to be my next question was what. So you're saying right now the line of credit max would be $183,046.88. 283. To it, yeah, what, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's really the way she wrote it was for the principal. Let me look through the, because okay. when we got it originally, we got it for more money because obviously I took out mm. like $650,000. And so basically what she's doing is she's giving us this 283 um, and then we'll pay down on that. So, but it'll give us a little more room in case we need to borrow for Peavine and, um, then obviously by the time Pinello comes around, this thing will be renewed. So I think we'll be okay for money wise. Okay. And, and that um, extra interest, is that something that we've accounted for with the $110,000 number that we put in the budget for town meeting day or? We didn't know at the time because we, we're hoping that it would be covered through FEMA. So we weren't sure, um, but I, it's, it shouldn't, hopefully, yeah, hopefully it covers out because we've got a project like Peavine came in under bid, the bridge came in. So I'm hoping Chris that it's in there. If not, we'll have to pick it up in the next budget. Okay. Cause we yeah, were hoping, so yeah, we were hoping FEMA was gonna pay for the interest on our line of credit as well as right. our um, audit, the, um, the, the other audit audit gonna, oh, yeah, and they're not going to apparently not going to pick up either, but we didn't know that till after the budget. Okay. So we may have to tag it into Pinello, which will go into another budget year. <clears throat> All righty. When does that need to be signed, Therese? Tomorrow? Well, <clears throat> it'd be nice. Let me see if she has a date on it. I think if you honestly, if you have it signed by Thursday or Friday, that would be fine because you're going to have today's date on it. So if you all get it signed, then I could get it in. It'd be nice if we could get, have it signed by everybody by Thursday and then I could get it to the bank. So could I do it when I come in to do pay it, look at payables or? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay. Just to reiterate, you want us to go up the handicap? Ramp? Yeah, that way you're not coming in the front door. Yeah, because the handicap will bring you right into my office. <clears throat> you can park so next to the mailbox. We're actually coming inside. Is the, yes. Is going with that. Okay. It's fine. You're going to be way more than six feet from my desk, so you'll be fine. I will um, put it over there. I'll try to find another clipboard and put it on there near the door, so if I'm not there, you'll see it. Okay. 
<clears throat> so is there a motion for this? They haven't made it yet. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. All right. <laughs> And would we actually be extending the terms or would we be entering newer terms? Well, I think she's calling it an extension because yeah. we had the loan already. So these are their terms. They're saying okay. it's just a change in terms agreement, basically because we've paid down the amount and then we're just doing it for another year. The interest rate's still 2%. I think that's still the same. Actually, that might be less than the rate she gave us before, which was three. So basically, she's just considering it a change in terms, which is very nice for us, makes it easier. Okay, so I would entertain a motion for us to allow, um, uh, let's see, so. Well, the interest actually increased from 2.0 2 to 2.5. The disbursement request on here, I'm holding paperwork that says it's a 2% interest rate. Well, uh, letter B under description of change in terms is the current interest rate of 2% is hereby increased to 2.5% and will remain fixed until maturity. That's funny because she lists it on the front page under disbursement request. It's still listed at, she's saying it's a fixed rate at 2%. Right. Um, so I'll have to ask her about that. <clears throat> so why don't we, um, do this when we um, so and then, honestly it doesn't matter because we need to sign it anyways because you need to extend the term so whether it's two or two point five we we don't really have a leg to argue with these people about this yeah because you're right but it's funny how she says that in but the beginning I didn't catch it if anything rates have gone down they shouldn't go up yeah so mm -hmm. I'll just clarify it with her so I guess basically we'd be looking for a motion. Um, to extend, basically, we'd look for a motion to sign the disbursement request and authorization and the chains in terms of agreements with the April 2019 FEMA line of credit. Okay, we'll get somebody to move that. So moved. Move. Okay, second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And I'll email Beth tomorrow and find out and let you guys know what she says. Well, I mean, it shouldn't go up. I mean, the no, it's just funny that everything says down, two and so. then it says 2.5. So I'll ask her. Yeah. So, but the good news is we'll be paying it down. So that's good. We're slowly getting our money back from FEMA. And so that check just came in and how much more do we have outstanding from FEMA right now? Um, I don't have the spreadsheet from last week that I sent you. That yeah, was because we got all that. We had got our federal highway money. That was the biggest pinch was the federal highway and we got all that money back. So um, <clears throat> it was more. For some reason, was, I was thinking. We got federal I, highway money back, Chris, not FEMA money, federal highway money. I misspoke. Oh. For some reason, I was thinking, yeah. Uh, that spreadsheet i think we were somewhere just under five hundred thousand left right well, i think part of the deal was that we had received some of the money and i hadn't dispersed it yet so it might have shown up in the spreadsheet but i hadn't mailed a check to mascoma okay so all right any further discussion on the extension of credit in mascoma for the fema work We have a uh, town manager's report. I know we went over a majority of it already, but anything that's. No, there was just um, Kelly hat. Uh, so everything we've covered so far, but the only other thing was at the transfer station, people had posted, I guess, on the town's Facebook page that they were concerned that they had gone to the transfer station and the employees were wearing masks, but people that were there were not wearing masks and a couple people were upset about it. Um, Jen got an email about one, responded to it, did a wonderful job responding to it. And, um, you know, bottom line is the governor has encouraged, quote unquote, encouraged people to wear masks. So if they don't, they don't. Um, right. It's encouraged, but not. It's not no, mandated. Not mandated. Not mandated. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that was it. But she, um, she, it was so one of them happened to be a couple um, that was a little bit older and, and she, she was great. She sent them a wonderful email and, and um, gave them a couple of options and it was, it was terrific. 
Well, I was, and that came out prior to my trip there on Saturday. So I was kind <clears> of <throat> watching as I was in line for an hour, um, <laughs> just kind of seeing how people were flowing in and out. And it didn't, it didn't appear to me that really there was much cluttering going on of people. And it seemed like people <coughs> were keeping their distance from each other, mm -hmm. you know, either bringing in the recyclables or, or whatnot. So yeah, I didn't she's... see any issues there. Mm. She's got it running like a well-oiled machine down there. Sure. Other than it was just, it was gridlock trying to yeah. get in and yeah. out. That was a little challenging, but. Yeah, I'm sure. Do you <clears throat> see the hours staying limited as they are? I do, actually. I think that I do see her staying um, at probably, possibly. I mean, it's up to the BRTS board, of course, but I do. Um, see her staying maybe to the seven to one once they open again maybe something different for contractors her and i've discussed it i think it's a great idea because it may reduce overtime down the road because then people are gone by one and it gives them a chance to actually get some other business done people will be trained to you know stick to the seven to one nobody will be in the office um you know i don't think she's going to open the office back up which i think makes a lot of sense and so you know I, I it'll obviously depend on the BRTS board what happens down there, of course. But um, I think that she has some some really good ideas, and certainly Mo would be better to comment on that than I would. And one one thing I noticed when I was there, um, and I'm sure it's always been an issue, but right now it's at a larger scale because you have so many people. Again, I think somebody hit it on the head earlier. You know, everybody's just home and they're cleaning mm -hmm. and. You know, these, instead of being in the back of a pickup, now it's in the back of a pickup that has a trailer towed behind it. <laughs> you know, literally when it's their turn to dump, they're dumping everything. And mm -hmm. I mean, it could be, you know, wire mesh or, I mean, there's just so many things that are not sorted that, and I watched the, um, I, I, forgive me, I don't remember the gentleman's name that runs the, the loader down there, but I watched him. Mm -hmm having to spend extra time of him actually going and as soon as somebody dumped he would pick certain items out to go bring them over and put them in the steel dumpster um when you know these people really should be sorting their uh waste a little better i mean i i'm sure people aren't going to be perfect but they clearly could have stopped and thrown the wire in the in the um steel bin and you know thrown your cardboard in the the dumpster right there but it seemed like it, it was easy just to dump it all there and you know i don't know how we crack down on that but people are lazy well there, yeah <laughs> there's, a of, there's a lot of stuff that could be better sorted and um that clearly isn't we could we could hire more people to do a lot more work but we can't afford it yeah so I did notice that this weekend that it seemed to be putting a little extra work on the gentleman that was there. That Wayne, yeah, It'll be Wayne. But, but revenues have got to be up there because there was a a whole lot of product coming in. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Our revenues are up. Yeah. Uh, anything further, Therese on? Nope, I'm good. Okay. Uh, we have select board meeting minutes from the 11th of May. Did we have a chance to go through those? Yeah, it looked good. Lisa, Lisa I'll email you uh, the correct spelling of Lily's last name. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Not an easy one. <laughs> I guess, actually, why don't, I'm going to put it in the chat. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you. And now, now you all know the correct spelling of her last name, so there'll be no mistakes from here on out, right? That's okay. great. I get, uh, <laughs> so it's R A. Oh, okay. All right. You were close, Lisa. Very close. Let me. I was up. close. Yeah, I think I even got it close. Although she's not in the background tonight, is she? No. Okay. All right. No. Well, and at least you didn't use Facebook and put Lily Hart. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. There you go. All right, thank you. Yeah, I'll fix that. Awesome. So that's the only change? I'll cancel over. 
Move to accept the meeting minutes as amended. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Sorry about that. That email's popping through my computer as uh, it was interrupting me. All these pop ups here coming through. <laughs> Let's see. And there, there was. Um, there were a bunch of other communications, the energy committee. Um, <clears throat> going through theirs. I, so it sounded like, I believe we talked about this maybe a month or so ago that I believe the energy committee bagged the, the one charging station in Bethel, correct? Yeah. 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 So that's been bagged. Okay. I thought that was, I thought we had talked about that. I couldn't remember. And then the um, town meeting committee had theirs. Chris, one quick question on the energy committee. Do we have to formally accept the resignations of those committee members? Well, they would have to be formally brought before us. Yeah. Before we could do that, I did, you know, so I would. I'll reach out to, um, I will reach out to Nicole and ask her if she received emails or letters from these people to get them on to forwarded to us so that we can, so yes, you would accept their resignations. So I'll reach out to her, to Nicole. So where does that put them for a committee if they're two are leaving? I, I don't know anymore. They, they had some people, I can't. They only leave them two more? I think they have three members total. Three total now. Because, but they had, because they had a couple other people that were interested. So I'm not sure. And then with COVID, I I don't know if they've picked up any more or not. Yeah, um, the, at the top of the, that meeting, it says we're down. Oh, to three down members. to three. Uh, okay. Down to three. They've so yeah, them meeting. and everybody else. Because okay. uh, so I'll ask her for Lauren, Elmore, and Jose Lazos resignations yeah well you know they're so they have three but they they're funny they usually pick up people they they usually make out all right the planning commission is what's going to kill us because we only have a couple people left and everybody on currently on the planning commission wants off so that's well, cecil yeah. that's um both andy's and the other very nice gentleman i'm forgetting his name so peter. But there's four P peter thank you peter doran so i have four on and they all want off. Well, Peter's only well, been there for about 30 years. I know. God bless him. Have yeah. you ever been on that on those that committee? Who, that, me? Anybody. I've attended their meetings, but I've never been in a position to be on a planning commission. But it's it's a tough gig. Yeah. yeah it's not it's not an easy one to be on. It's not. It's a lot of reading. It's like we tried to get Joanne Marshall to join and Doug, you know. <laughs> Joanne, she we needed someone to crack that whip, but <laughs> and, and they're at a real critical point in the in the uh, change to the uh, planning too, the town plan. Well, they're all at this point committed to finishing, but I think what you're right. gonna see is town plan's gonna get through and then you're gonna have a mass exodus. But mm -hmm. they all at this point are being very wonderful and agreeing to stay on. Um, certainly, I have done some of the work, Dave Aldrigetti, like any pieces that we've received, I've got from Sarah Wright from Two Rivers so that I've reviewed them. I made changes to like highway. Uh, Dave and I did the emergency services. So we're trying to, to help by doing some of the sections too. So, I, you know, I don't know what we do at this point, but, you know, that it's kind of sad because the town is, is really turned things around quite a bit here over the last, you know, four years or so. And, and now that we finally have good momentum going forward and now we're losing, you know, our committee members mm -hmm. um, slowly, you know, and there really has been no new committee members coming on here the last couple of years. And, yeah, you know. it's hard. I have people are, you know, they're busy. And then of course COVID and we have had some people that have continued with Zoom, but you know, people are busy oh. and, huh? I saw Doug just uh, was 
patting sprinkles. Oh, I hadn't so seen we, her in a long time. We have had people, you know, that I think are are interested, but they're just saying how maybe they have a young family, and so. But some of these meetings are just once a month, and I know. we have tried different Facebook techniques. We've tried. You know, all sorts of stuff. So I, I don't know, maybe we'll have to put a mailer in with the tax bill this year, maybe getting people to say, hey, you know what, here's your tax bill. You, you got well, a problem I mean, with your tax bill? Join a committee. You know, what's going to happen and, you know, as it, if more of these phase out, I mean, it's no different than the select board, right? I mean, at some point, you know, the members that are on the select board are going to phase out. And, and if we don't have people ready to pick up where you know, committees and select boards are at, this town's going to go revert right back to what it was. And it's true. I don't know how, I mean, I, I could probably find many different ways to use my time, you know, with my family and kids and whatnot. But I mean, kind of all need to pitch in and do our civic duties if we want to keep things going forward. Right. I don't know how we get that out to people because everybody's got an excuse that whatever their kids or work or don't have time, but I think if you look at all of us here, except for Doug, we we all uh, we all don't have time. <laughs> you know, yeah. we make time, but so, uh, Doug's yeah. the only one that's got all the time in the world. But <laughs> <That's right. laughs> other than <laughs> so, I don't know how we get that out to people. I mean, they they really got to understand that you know it, it's going to get to a point where it's going to get critical. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it is. I mean, with the planning commission, I think we're there and we have done Facebook posts. We have had stuff at town meeting. We've done announcements at town meeting. We've had mm -hmm. things in the newspaper that never gets us anywhere. So I make it, I just made a note on my thing. Maybe we'll do an insert into the tax bills and just say, look, you know what? We're looking, we're asking people to give a couple of hours a month and maybe we'll think of some really catchy wording and but Chris, you couldn't do anything with your time that would be more fun than this. <laughs> no, probably not. <laughs> What's his favorite but, group? <laughs> well, you know, the idea too with, you know, whatever it is, if it's a select board or a committee is, you know, you never want a mass exodus of people. I mean, you want to be able exactly. to. Exactly. You know, it takes time. I, mean, I remember when I came onto the select board, the whole first year was just really just sitting there absorbing information and learning the process and it takes time before you can actually be you know positive to your group mm -hmm. and, and and you know have a say and know what you're doing and like the planning commission i can't imagine if if we went from you know if everybody left off that committee and you had all new ones i mean what you know i know you know, pick up the pieces but actually be productive and positive going forward with that well, we went through this winter before COVID, Kelly and Pam and I, we went through the like 911 addresses and tried to go up every single road in our minds to who lived there. We sent out personal invitations, Doug and uh, Joanne got one. And so we tried to think, we asked people, I, you know, who else would they know? They gave us lists. I mean, we sent out I uh, got easily 30 to 50 personal invitations inviting people just to the planning commission. Yeah. But and I, I think it's challenging because people, when we, when typically when people are asking for names to join a committee, you know, they think that it's, I mean, even though it is optional, you know, they think it's more of a, you know, oh, there's a bunch of other people out there that'll do it. I don't have the time. And, and I think people really got to oh. know now that. Yeah. If we don't have functioning committees, then we're going to be in trouble. I know. If anybody has any great ideas, I'd love to hear them because we have, I mean, as I said, we've done personal invitations, ads in the paper, Facebook posts, town meeting. I mean, we've done, so we'll try the tax bills. That's something new. I even had researched some kind of catchy language to try to get people's, you know, laugh or to kind of get them to look into it a little more. So we'll try and insert in the tax bill and see I've got a brilliant idea, guys. What? You join the planning commission, you're allowed to drink at Babes. <laughs> people that join the planning commission are allowed to drink at Babes. Will we right, Paul, Paul, you're not allowed to leave the select board. Uh, <laughs> <boom>. <laughs> we beat them down the stick. People. We need more people. That's true. Yes. We'll start holding the meetings at Babes. That's right. You need 14 yeah. seats. We'll get you 14 seats. Uh, that's right. You can only have 14 in the building. <laughs> a lot of people clamoring, to be honest. We could. That's right. I think we, we, 
You got nine yeah. people on the committee plus the servers and a minute taker. You got 14, you're there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I just, I don't know how we do it. It's, it, you know, it is frustrating know. because we have, you know, gotten the town kind of going in a really good forward position. I'd hate to lose, lose all that. And yeah. again, if people just leave all at the same time, it's, you know, it takes years to rebuild that. You know, it's not something yeah. that you found five bodies, you're going to be able to just take off again. It takes time. Um, so. I'll reach out to some other people that I know in municipal government and see what they've done, how they, you know, how they've found people to volunteer. Probably yeah. it's a lot of shaming people into it. I don't know. <laughs> Guilt? I'm not sure. Good yeah. job for Julie, Dave. Yeah, go ahead. You let her know. You ask her. <laughs> I will. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I know it, you know, I know there's, <clears throat> you know, not only is there a lot of people that have left the committees, but the ones that are holding on, if you look at it, are the ones that have been there for quite some time, you know, yeah. it's, it's yeah. a matter of time before they, you know, just really can't do it anymore. Right. You yeah. Know? Peter Dorn, he told me, he said, Teresa, I'm just tired. I've been doing this for 30 years. He's like, yeah. I'm just, and, but he, God bless him. He's, they've been hanging in there. So, all right, well, we'll try to, I'll ask around, see what people have done for ideas. And okay. uh, if, obviously, if anybody wakes up in the night with some brilliant idea, call me tomorrow. <laughs> call me. <laughs> Already given you mine. There you go. That's it. Babe, sorry, we got that one down. Mm. All right. So it looks like we're hoping, Chris, that our next meeting is in person. I, I guess I don't know. <clears throat> I would say right now, let's, <clears throat> you know, It's challenging because the, the governor's um, address on Friday was very uh, difficult to understand um, because he relaxed, you know, he extended it for a month, but he relaxed some of the wordage that comes along with it. So it was kind of challenging to really figure out where you stand as a, whatever, a business owner or a person. And um, uh, it, it does say right now, you know, currently that, you know, we can have up to, um, you know, a group meeting of 10. Um, and we currently have eight on the phone. So, um, you know, I don't know what we want to do as a group as, you know, do we want to show our support for people that are opening back up by, you know, meeting in person? And if we do have, um, you know, certain um, exclusions based upon, you know, health or something like that, we could I guess the way I was looking at it is maybe running it like we did the last meeting before we went completely. That's what I was thinking, Chris. I could yeah. have a Zoom meeting set up so you could participate either in person or via right. Zoom. And then maybe we can transition back that way, you know, over the next meeting two or three, you know, go from, you know, Zoom to kind of half Zoom back to hopefully, you know, a normal setting. One thing to think about, um, especially given that we're going to be inviting like Dick McCormick and maybe business owners is it's a little harder to hear the folks on zoom and the folks not on zoom. And we're mm. thinking about inviting more people than probably 10 or the potential for more than 10 to show up. Would it be a more functional conversation to do something like that through zoom and then look at the, the next meeting as. Yeah. yeah that makes sense. I forgot I about that. That's a better, uh, a better way to approach it. So if we, get the eight, yeah. if we did another Zoom meeting for the 8th, then that would mean the 23rd, is that right? 22nd? Um, 22nd? 22nd would be our first one. And you know, I guess the 15th is when the order is supposed to run out again, right? All right, so we might know more by then. Um, yeah. Lindley, don't you have addresses for the businesses because you were in the group with Jesse and Owen? Uh, yeah, and I was gonna um, talk with you uh, separately about that. We do, I ha I'd have to go back in and look um, at who's, who's we've actually gotten to sign up, but I think we have most of the downtown businesses plus some additional ones, but we'd mostly, you're talking for water steward, right? Um, no, well, or anything, I guess Chris was saying for both, maybe what I'm thinking is I wonder if you could just send everybody an email and say, hey, we're trying to get people together for this meeting. Maybe they would be willing to send me their questions in advance. If they had any specific questions, then I could get them to Dick McCormick um, and Sandy Haas if she's 
I don't know if she's even doing anything anymore, but I'll have to, but I'll let, I'll ask Dick if he's available that night. And then, um, but if I had the questions in advance, even if he can't come, maybe he could give us answers. Right. Point yeah, is in the right I, direction. I was <laughs> to you about um, contacting that list. My other thought was, um, since Sandy's sort of on the way out and might not influence us as much, um, seeing if uh, Allison Clarkson, so we'd have the House and a Senate representative. Yeah. Um, so, and I'd be happy to email her. Uh, uh, okay, that'd be great. So we we can chat more details tomorrow. But yeah, yeah that'd, that'd be. be thank you. Yeah, that'd be good. So Zoom for next meeting and then potentially pers in person after that? Yeah, that'd be nice. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. And I didn't, um, I personally didn't have time to go through the, the budget there, Therese, so I will, um, I'll send you any questions I may have. Okay. Later. Yeah, that's fine. <clears throat> Grace, a question about the uh, on the rec committee's uh, report uh, concerning the pool. Now, I don't I don't know as the governor has released that you know the information to let the pool open, but the tentative dates it's basically six weeks, and I'm wondering whether the expense is worth the six weeks that it would be open. Well, you guys had already talked to Dietrich and approved the dates that she was going to open um, before um, COVID-19. And yes, we're still waiting. We don't know if we're going to be allowed to open. We're assuming at this point we may not be allowed to um, uh, probably do swimming lessons. Uh, you know, we're still kind of, we're still waiting as well for the governor. But yes, yeah, because I think her, her explanation for you all had been that due to leap year, it was kind of this. So she went for the shorter season. Um, it's only a week shorter than last year, um, if I remember correctly. So, uh, so what I have talked to Dietrich about is obviously it depends when the governor is going to let us open. If he lets us open on time, then we're good. But what I'm, con what her and I are both concerned about is what sort of parameters are going to be put around that. <clears throat> so, we're playing it by ear. Her and I have discussed the fact that if we can't open the pool to in a way that's manageable, then maybe we don't this year. Um, obviously, the pool need there's some maintenance that needs to happen around the uh, uh, there at the at the rec center for the pool. There's uh, currently some paving around the pool, but it doesn't go all the way to the fence. Um, there's some painting needs to be done. There's some fiberglass work. So if the pool cannot be open and managed in a in a feasible, responsible way, then maybe we don't open this year. Um, but we certainly would be able to. Yeah, we'd save some money. Um, and we'd also be able to get some maintenance done. So mm -hmm. we're just waiting right now. I think in the, at the news conference today, there was a pool that they spoke about that that was not going to be open. It, it was, maybe it was in a state park or one of the campgrounds. I didn't state see it. Park. It was a state, state park. Yep. State park. Yeah. And Woodstock isn't opening their pool this year either. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're just waiting. We're, you know, we we don't know yet. We have some possible, you know, lifeguards. And like I said, we didn't plan on doing, probably not gonna be able to do swimming lessons. And if we can't do swimming lessons, we would like to do a mailer to the community, just reminding people about water safety. We have had some drownings in the area. It's reminding people that there's links out there via the Red Cross for parents to um, be able to watch, uh, you know, something about water safety and uh, maybe even just working with their children on previous skills that they'd learned at a prior, you know, level of swimming lessons, but we don't know. So um, I, like I said, I didn't see the governor's thing today. And I wondered that myself because there was a pool at, at least at one of the um, state parks that I could remember. And mm -hmm. some of these people are just making their choices now, like Woodstock. Yes. They're not being mandated by the state right now. Yep. And if we can't open the pool, then we, we're not, we probably can't do family fun Fridays. You know, we're just really not sure right now. So we, there was some mm -hmm. other recreation stuff out today and I looked through it briefly and sent it on to Deidre to look, but still was pools and beaches weren't open. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Well, I mean, it, I know it would be nice to see the pool open and I, I know the biggest thing that comes to mind is kind of kids and safety and 
you know, if the pool doesn't open, then they're probably going to be swimming in the river, right? And exactly. And that is you know, the pool's a lot. The pool's a lot safer than the river is. Exactly. And that's what Dietri is very nervous about. And we've <laughs> talked about this is, are we going to have to have someone at the gate, you know, with a clicker? Like how many people? Is it families? Do you sign up in advance? You know, we just don't know yet what the parameters are going to be that the governor's, you know, if he's, I have a feeling there's going to be some restrictions. We just need to, we'll find out what those are and how we can manage them. And, and if we can. Yeah. All right. Does anybody have anything further? I'm all set. Is there, is there an update at all on the tax collections? How the, how that went? No, because um, they everything was due Friday. So we were just processing today, Fridays. And then of course, because you all accept postmarks. So I'm probably not gonna, I won't know till the next meeting what we're looking at. Well, Doug kind of looks like a lifeguard. <laughs> <laughs> so the only doggy panel. <laughs> <laughs> that, it's a small pool, Doug, you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> you could jump them in their water wings. We'll be all set. I, I throw them a donut ring with a rope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. All right. Oh, that's well, funny. Well, there obviously must be a cutoff date of when we need to, you know, go forward or cut bait with the pool, right? Well, <laughs> we were talking about that this afternoon, actually, because we, you know, she has a head lifeguard that has the opportunity to take a different job. And we were mm -hmm. kind of just saying, you know, what point are we going to call this? And I honestly, you know, I'm going to reach out to the eight, um, I'm going to write to the Agency of Commerce and Community Development tomorrow and just say, look, any idea what we're looking at here? Because we need to fish or cut bait here and figure out what we're going to do. Because obviously, even if we open, I really doubt we're going to do pool passes. We're probably only going to be able to make, have to make people pay as they come. And if we can only have X amount of people in there at a time, then we're going to have to have somebody at the gate turning people away. That's going to make people unhappy. I'm not, mm -hmm. you know, otherwise, are we going to have them book it in advance? You know, I don't know. So I'm going to write to the Agency of Commerce and Community Development tomorrow. That's what I told Dietri this afternoon to mm. see what they're thinking. Well, and if it is limited capacity, which I would imagine it probably will be, you know, then they, you know, if we do open, you got to look at things instead of paying for the day to sit at the pool, you may be paying for an hour or two to sit up. It, yes, that's what Dietri and I were talking about. And then it's gonna be, okay, we have limited lifeguards, so now we're gonna limit the hours of the pool. So maybe right. instead of opening the pool at 11, we open it at one and we're there from, but we're there from one to seven, but it's, it's just gonna be tricky because right. we're gonna end up, you know, we could end up turning people away, so. And how do you do a no contact, <laughs> you know, situation there at a pool? Mean, no exactly. Bad. We're just not sure. So oh, I had told her, her and I, and uh, actually Matt, uh, Maddie, their daughter, Maddie Feeney, who was, you know, led the pool last year, was at the office and we all kind of chatted about it. And um, I told them both I would write to the Agency of Commerce and Community Development tomorrow to see, you know, they've got to be thinking something right now. Um, give us, you know, just give us something. But yeah, I, my you know worst fear is we call it and say no, we're not going to open, and then all of a sudden the governor throws the doors open, and we're going, oh, you know, and people are mad. I don't know. Alrighty. No easy answer on that one. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything further? Or are we all set for the night? I'm all set. We adjourn. Okay. Second. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye.